Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this quick video I've been getting a bunch of emails in regards to my convertible top restoration video that I did a couple years ago on a 70 Beetle. Uh, so the 68 and later or late 67 and later Beetles, uh, the tops went together a little bit differently and the big difference is uh, back here on the, the base bow where the wood is along the body line here and it's tucked down in there there should be areas where you screw the wood into the body uh, so on these earlier beetles there is no channel like in the later beetles where a cable goes through and you have a bead that runs across here so the question is is you know people are asking how do you do it how do you fasten it down here on the earlier beetles so this is a 66 beetle that you're looking at right now and we are finishing this top it is fall i wish i had some summertime sun to get this to beat out a little bit but it is working even some fall sun is making this top these wrinkles will all come out in the sun and with some uh, misting water on it this will get straight this was all wrinkly uh, yesterday and now it's kind of evened itself out even the top has evened itself out as you can see now the vinyl working with vinyl uh, a lot harder than working with canvas canvas is a lot easier to work with it's uh, has a little more stretch to it uh, this vinyl will stretch but out the box when you're installing it on your beetle it's tight I'm talking really tight uh, so there was issues down here once we wrap the front here okay and, and stapled that to the front wood bow and we started pulling the top back it was very hard to even get this screw down here here's that corner section here that's supposed to get screwed into the outside facing the wood facing here we really had to pull the top up almost to a vertical 90, 90 degree angle to get this to get pulled down to here and then we had to tack in a few screws here so you know the vinyl material comes across and then this is where your line goes along the wood so you have to put a, a few staples in here and get this on before you even start working back here the 70 beetle that i was working on we were able to get this channel going and then then i moved myself off to the side here and started screwing this down because that's a good guide in the later beetles you know the material has the, the channel sewn to it already so you have a general idea of where that's supposed to be placed these earlier beetles it's a little more difficult to see that uh, so you got to go by these lines to see where the placement's going to be so once we start once we screwed in down here and stapled here then we started to slowly close the top we put it out in the sun and we baked it and we squirted it with some water a little mist you know just get a squirt bottle and put it on uh, you know a mist and you want to mist the top you would see steam coming off the top even in the fall even in cold weather if you got a black top it's a no-brainer that the sun is going to be attracted to it so uh, and then eventually the top started to close I mean it, like I said it was literally a 90 degree angle and then it just it started to close and we got to this point pretty much once you get to this point that's when you can start pulling back here so the key is you want to be it's it could be a little you know scary to do because you don't want to mess up down here you don't want to pull too much and then you can't close the top and then you got to take the staples out and now all of a sudden your holes that were once here are now up here because you had to maneuver it. So I like it as a good guide to be almost closed with the top here on the earlier beetles. So then you can see your, your, your material, your wrinkles are almost coming out, and then you start pulling back here. It's still going to be tight, and you got to pull it as hard as you can. And then what you do is you're going to staple literally right above the body line into the wood. You don't want to go much higher than that because you need... Either the chrome trim piece is going to go on this, or you're going to use the, the vinyl bead that they give you in the kit. So you want to go as low as you can, 
and staple all along the body line. Again, pulling maybe every inch or two, and you're pulling tight, pulling tight, and making sure you're moving the wrinkles out of the way. And then once you start working your way around, you'll start to see, you might see some wrinkles on this side like we kind of have here. This will go away when you go out in the sun and mist some more and beat it in the sun. You will see this was very wrinkly yesterday, uh, but we were able to get that out uh, with some uh, heat and, um, and water. So now what happens then after, once you have that all stretched, and then once you fasten down the top and the front, in the kit, now originally there's a chrome trim piece that goes along the bottom here. And the nails from that trim piece go into the wood as well. Now, of course, it's going to go a little bit above those staples, but not too far above the staples because that trim piece needs to cover these staples. So that's the whole gimmick here in the back. You need to, you know, you want to block off these staples uh, so you don't see them. So there's a bead piece at first that you're supposed to get that should come in your kit, TMI kit, or anywhere you get your top. We got this kit from M&T Manufacturing in Rhode Island. So here's the bead. Okay, so what this is supposed to do, let's come over here. So you will see here now the bead Basically, you, this flap is going to be covering your staples. And the bead is basically right on the ridge or right on the edge of the body line. And then this gets stapled down here as well to cover these staples. So, and then this bead is going to come all the way across to this section. And then you'll have to finish that off on the end. And they give you some finishing ends, chrome ends that go on uh, the end of this bead here. I'll show you that in a second. So, so you have to then staple that into the wood as well. And again, have the bead hang over the body just a little bit. That's about it. Now, this also has to get trimmed. So once you're set up here with these staples, trim this off. And be very careful doing this. You need enough material here to be, you know, below this staple just because you need some strength. If you cut the material right up to the staple, this is going to tear. So you need to keep enough strength, but at the same time, enough for the bead to cover. All right? So I know it could be a little problematic. And then on top of this bead is supposed to be your chrome trim piece or your lace that they also give you in the kit. Sometimes there's a lace that comes uh, with your kit, which I think comes with all kits, or you go with the chrome trim piece. Um, so let me show you what we did on a 61 convertible over here. I'll take a little travel walk through my shop. So here's a, my 54 convertible. At one point in its time, it had a convertible top redone on it, this vinyl would not have been stock on a 54 convertible it would have been canvas so somebody did redo the top so here's what i'm talking about here now you have your bead here stapled again right by the body line and then on and then above that you have this bead here now check this bead out this bead actually folds this is what your kit comes with. So you pull this back, there's a wire in here. You pull this back, staple in there again. Again, more staples. Make sure you have an air stapler, a hand stapler, which just will not do this, guys. And then once you staple in that bead, then you close the bead like that. And then that's how you get these multiple rolls here to kind of finish the edge of your convertible on the back here. And then here's the chrome piece I was telling you about that finishes off the bead at the end. So, 61 convertible here. Had to do this earlier this year, but this has the chrome trim piece instead. So you got your bead and then your chrome trim piece. Now, I did buy the original 
styling chrome trim piece, I think from Wolfsburg West. And my God, I think I spent three, $400 on the two pieces. The one piece that goes up on this over window bow, which was okay to put in. That wasn't too bad. Um, you do have to nail it in on the ends or screw it in. They have nails that come in already placed in the trim that have to be hammered down into the wood and you need a special tool for that it's a wood tool that actually has like a you know a belly in it to cup over the chrome and it's got a nice size handle to it and you can hammer it down without kinking the chrome now the piece I had for here Oh my God, guys, it was so difficult to get this in and the way it curved onto the body was so ridiculous that it just, it was, it felt like it was nearly impossible. Now I'm up for a challenge for these things, but this, my father and I were on this for probably two or three days trying to get the chrome in. And then when you did get it in and nailed in, all it wanted to do was pop out. There was too much tension, too much pressure. Now, what do you see here on this car? Which is, you're going to laugh. This is actually a rollout chrome piece that you buy from AutoZone. I believe this is like a uh, half inch in thickness. Okay, maybe three quarter. And it's a rollout chrome. It has 3M self adhesive backing. Now, that won't stick too well to canvas. But we did put our chrome finished ends on here. And we got some chrome nails and at the, the crucial points on the top so say on this seam line we put a nail as you see there in the center just above the decklet here we put another nail and then of course another nail on this seam line and the finishing end over here and you take a step back that looks the part and you're spending twenty dollars on that roll so i said to myself you know 90 percent of the times in this day and age i'm driving with my top down so you don't really see this as i got the top boot on it and uh we were relieved when we did this and uh when we showed it to some of our german experts that came around they did not even pick up on it they thought it looked very natural uh so that is your alternative route if you did want to go that route. Um, now, you could also do it for this top piece here. So, you know, when you, when you get the kit that I bought from Wolfsburg, you get this piece and the bottom piece. I still have this bottom piece. If anybody wants it for their convertible, you're more than welcome to it. Just, uh, you know, I can send it off to you. But um, it's not kinked in any way. It's not really damaged in any way. So... Uh, if you guys want it, let me know. Hit me up. But uh, that's what you can do. And that's how basically the top gets um, fastened down. You see like the lace over here. It gets tucked under the cup. So it has that. You all have this finishing lace edge here to make it all look nice. Um, and that's basically how it works. Doing convertible top stuff, guys, is a tedious job. Uh, it could take time. If you've never done it before, especially on the early convertibles, it could be, it could be pretty tough. Um, but that's that's that video for today. I wanted to just show you because I've been getting emails about people, you know, they have early convertibles and they're following my video and, uh, you know, how to fasten it from the bot from the back here. As you can see, the, the canvas has a nice, uh, smooth uh, fashion to it. I mean, pretty much it's wrinkle free. And you can see here a uh, lot easier to work with than the, than the vinyl. I know the vinyl is cheaper. But I'd say go with the canvas just because, number one, it does look a lot better. And it's it's better to work with. Um, yes, you got to keep up on it. It might get, you know, tan canvas like this might get a little dirty. Um, and also, canvas is not the best for, you know, trapping water. Uh, well, they actually, it does trap water. It doesn't make it roll off. Vinyl will, you know, make the water roll off more than canvas canvas will absorb um so that's why volkswagen went to vinyl eventually with their, all their convertibles so um but yeah guys uh, that that's how you fasten the back end there um also uh, you know if you get a chance let me show you oops, sorry about that glare 
I have, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. I have this VW Bible book here, if you guys can ever get a chance to find something like this. The Volkswagen Manual. I got three of these big, big daddy books here and pretty much anything you want to know about convertible top installation is here. And uh, I've been following this book to a T. They do, some areas are a little off with measurements. It's funny, like on one section of the book, they'll talk about one set of measurements. And then if you go a few pages ahead, they'll show the same diagram and their measurements are different. So I don't know who was, you know, typing this all up. So for instance, here, you'll see a set of measurements here where to place the windows and the bows and such. And if you go a few other spots back maybe those measurements are then different they show different numbers here so you know you try to gauge you know you try to find a happy medium i guess but uh, this is a great book to have if you ever want to do a convertible top installation the one other thing i want to clarify is when i did my 70 convertible i basically attached the headliner from the front bow, next bow, to the next bow, to the next bow. That Bible book will tell you, you don't start from there. So the Bible book will say, just tack the front bow, maybe just on the side, just to hold it in place. It's not the end all to attach the headliner to the front bow. The first area where you attach your headliner is to the main bow. This is the bow that does not that does not uh, move at all. This is the main big bow. So you want to attach that uh, to here first. Then it's the over window bow, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and then it's down to the base bow. Then at this point, then you go to the header. That's when you fasten there. And then they want you to then fasten to the inside wood and then you go to the middle bow here. That's the floater bow just above the window bow. And then you go to this bow right there. Uh, so just in front of the header bow. So uh, that's the placement for attaching the headliner or at least the, the orientation, the steps to uh, do that. Um, so there's other guys online that'll tell you a little bit differently, but from the Bible book, that's what they tell you to do. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, if you guys got any questions, uh, please be sure to uh, leave them in the comments section below. I try to answer all my comments. And also, if you can, please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is another tip from Classic VW Bugs. And of course, for the price of a cup of coffee, it'd be great if you guys can send a little donation to our cause uh, to keep these vintage vw beetles alive and on the road and making them look beautiful as they drive by it's the reason why people give you thumbs up guys um so small donation doesn't have to be anything crazy i'm not looking for anything nuts just something to say hey thank you for sharing this content and uh we really appreciate it if you when you guys throw that to us it's really nice um and i got the link in the description below the video so all right guys i know that was a little long-winded uh, i just wanted to clarify what happens when you do the uh installation of the head the top towards the the rear tack bow on the body it could be it could be tough convertible tops can beat you up um they can take sometimes a week or so just to do this whole process so uh, all right guys hope all is well be happy be safe go drive your volkswagen and go have fun and uh i'll see you next time um.